Hello friend, in this video, I will provide information on different causality assessment methods used in pharmacovigilance field including information on why causality assessment methods are required, how many methods are used for causality assessment, which are those methods, which are frequently used methods, and how causality is decided in those methods. For more videos on pharmacovigilance related trainings, please click on i button on the top border of this video. Links are also provided in the description box. With that being said, let's start. Let's first see, why causality assessment methods were developed. Causality assessment methods were developed because an inherent problem in pharmacovigilance is that most case reports concern suspected ADR. Adverse reactions are rarely specific for the drug, diagnostic tests are usually absent, and a rechallenge is rarely ethically justified. In practice, few adverse reactions are certain or unlikely, most are somewhere in between these extremes, means possible or probable. Also for years, causality assessment was completely dependent on expert judgment, which is dependent on knowledge and experience of each expert. Hence there is a high possibility of disagreement and inter-individual variability on assessment. In an attempt to solve this problems, many systems have been developed for structured and harmonized assessment of causality. So, what are these causality assessment methods? Well, there are many causality assessment methods available on internet, you can see names of all these causality assessment methods on the screen and list is not just limited to what you can see on the screen. Different causality categories are adopted in each method, and the categories are assessed using different criteria. Each causality assessment methods have their advantages and disadvantages. However, unfortunately, no single method is universally accepted because of poor reproducibility and validity of these methods. Let's now see how causality assessment methods are classified. Causality assessment methods are classified in three groups, global introspection methods, algorithms methods, and probabilistic methods. Global introspection methods, also known as clinical judgment or expert judgment methods, in this methods assessment of ADR is done by single expert evaluator or by a group of expert evaluators. Evaluation and assessment of ADR by these experts is purely based on their respective knowledge and experience about the subject of interest. For example, Swedish method by Willalm and World Health Organization, WHO, Uppsala Monitoring Center, UMC, Causality Assessment Criteria, these two methods are based on global introspection. Algorithm Methods it consists of a problem-specific flow chart with step-by-step -step instruction on how to reach at an answer. It gives a structured and standardized methods of assessment in a systemic way. These are some set of questionnaires whose answer provide the causality. For example, French immutability method, Kramer algorithm and Naranjo's algorithm. Probabilistic methods, also known as Bayesian approaches. These approaches use specific findings in a case to transform the prior estimate of probability into a posterior estimate of probability of drug causation. The prior probability is based on epidemiological information or extrinsic factors, and the posterior probability combines this background information with the evidence in the individual case, both extrinsic and intrinsic factors, to estimate the strength of the causal relationship. Generally, these methods require more data than is available or data that is introspective, hence, not yet practical. Which methods are frequently used? As I have already said, there is no standard in causality models, but a few are used more frequently. In this presentation we will focus on two methods. One is the WHO scale, an example of an expert judgment or global introspection method and the other one is, Naranjo's algorithm, which is an example of an algorithm using a set of specific questions. Now, let's see, WHO, UMC causality assessment criteria or WHO scale. 
The WHOUMC system has been developed in consultation with the national centers participating in the program for international drug monitoring. It is meant as a practical tool for the assessment of case reports. It is widely and globally used method. Assessment is based on following four criteria. A. Time relationship between the drug use and the adverse event. B. Absence of other competing causes, for example medications, and disease process itself. C. Response to drug withdrawal or dose reduction, also called de challenge, and D. Response to drug readministration, also called rechallenge. Based on number of these criteria met, the level of causal association has been grouped into four categories. Categories used in WHO scale are, certain, probable, possible, and unlikely. Besides these four categories, based on need of addition information to decide causal association, ADR can also be categorized into fifth category, conditional or unclassified, and sixth category, unaccessible or unclassifiable. This slide shows how causality is decided in WHO scale. Certain causality is provided when A, B, C, and D all criteria are met, means when the event is in favorable time relation with a drug, there is absence of other competing causes, response to withdrawal is plausible. Means, the challenge is positive and rechallenge is also positive. Probable or likely causality is provided when only A, B and C criteria are met means when the event is in favorable time relation with a drug, there is absence of other competing causes and response to withdrawal or de challenge is reasonable, but rechallenge is not required. Possible causality is provided when only criteria A is met, means when the event is in favorable time relation with a drug, but there is presence of other competing causes and information on drug withdrawal may be lacking or unclear. Unlikely causality is provided when criteria A and B are not met, means when the event is in not favorable time relation with a drug, but there is presence of other competing causes. Conditional or unclassified causality is provided when more data for proper assessment needed, or additional data is under examination, and Unaccessible or unclassifiable causality is provided when information is insufficient or contradictory and data cannot be supplemented or verified. Now, let's see Naranjo's algorithm. On this slide you can see, table of Naranjo's algorithm. Naranjo's algorithm is a commonly used method. It is an example of algorithm methods, utilizing specific sets of questions. Here, as you can see in the table, there are 10 elemental questionnaire in this algorithm, with three answers of each question including yes, no and unknown. Based on the replies, the score can be determined into categories. Naranjo scale assesses the causality using the traditional categories of definite, probable, possible, and doubtful. So, that's it from my side on causality assessment methods. Thank you for watching this video. If you feel information provided in this video is helpful, please hit the like button. Please share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel. If you have any question please write them in comment box. For more videos on pharmacovigilance related trainings, please click on i button on the top border of this video. Links are also provided in the description box.